I can be what it says I can be. I can do what it says I can do. I'm about to receive the life-changing seed of the Word of God, and my life shall never be the same, because I came to believe, and where I have need, I came to change, and the devil cannot stop me. By the help of God, I shall believe, I shall receive, and I shall be changed. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So we're going to conclude my section this morning uh, we, uh, by way of a short review before we can get into our last piece of information. Uh, we started out by talking about uh, the roles of female daughters, women, wives, and mothers, the roles of our females in our family, our daughters, women, wives, and mothers, uh, uh, stating that, of course, we all women, we are females, we were all uh, born as daughters. We come in, well, we come women, and then we become wives, and we become mothers in that particular order because we understand that God is a God of order. We saw that in, in uh, the book of Genesis when God placed Adam and Eve in the garden. He didn't give them children first. He had to cultivate. He had to mold. He had to instruct through Adam. He had to instruct Adam, I mean, instruct Eve, because she did not have the uh, privilege of having a mother and a father. But we do see that instruction going forth to show her and to teach her, and that is what God intends. He intended that before uh, she became a mother. And so we saw all of those roles, the roles that Adam, that Adam should have played. He started out playing that. We saw that. And then we saw that he got a little slack for whatever reason. He got slack in what his role was. And so that's why it's important that we understand that each role is crucial and critical to everyone else's role in the house. Everyone's role is contingent upon, contingent upon everyone playing and doing their part in their role where they're supposed to be so that every other uh, role can function properly. And so that's a very, very, very important point for us to um, to grasp a hold of. And again, it's not we're not talking about um, um, hearing truth. It's like our pastor's been saying, the truth that, that she's been teaching is for us. The word is always for you. We tend to look to other people about what we hear and, and then decide, you know, that oh, that's for that person, that's for me, that's for not for me, that's for them. But every word is for us. And even if you are doing what you're supposed to do, it never, it never, then you, you, won't, even, you won't even be offended by hearing the word. You won't even, you, and anything else, your spirit can bear witness. Yes, Lord, thank you for confirming that I am on the right track and doing what you asked me to do. So we always need to hear the word for, for ourselves, hear the word for, from our perspective, for ourselves, so that we can play the part. It says, you know, the scripture tells us that you need to be careful, right? Careful that because you can fall for the same temptation, the same thing that some that you can accuse somebody else of, you can fall into those same things mm -hmm. if you're not mindful of your own business. Mm -hmm. We gotta be mindful of our own business, right? We always try to take care of everybody else, but we gotta be mindful of our own business. So we talked about uh, about the woman. We and we ended up talking about uh, the last piece of what we talked about last week was Christ being the head of the church and his bride, just like in Ephesians, and we won't go to that scripture, uh, but in Ephesians chapter five, when it talks about the husband being the head of the wife, and Christ being head of the husband, and God being the father, head of us all, <coughs> the God, the father of us all. So we need to understand that uh, Christ, the head of the church and his bride, which is the church, they are structured, they're structured, the way that he structured it, and they are structured and responsible in producing and cultivating offspring, other members of the church. And when we talk about structure, we know that Christ, the head of the church, the bride of the church, the church, the church being the bride of Christ, that he provides, like in Ephesians, in, in, uh, Ephesians it talks about how the, the husband is supposed to lay down his life. That didn't just happen that way. That is a structure that was structured for Christ and the church. Christ laid down his life yes. for the church. Yes. He gave his life for yes. the church. And then he provides for the church continuously 
provide everything that we need, mm-hmm. everything that we need to function in this local body, in the house. Mm-hmm. If you can relate, let's, let's relate this back to, to the husband and the wife and the household. He provides for the household that we may be able to function the way we need to function so that we can produce church members, other members, other disciples after us. It's us working, teaching, instructing, guiding, and his Holy Spirit. Us teaching and guiding as the mothers, us teaching as guiding as the brides, us teaching and guiding, but God's direction. It is him who enables. It is he who enables. So in the household, it is the father who enables by teaching and guiding. And then the mother, right along with them, teaches and instructs mm-hmm. so that they can be on this, they can cultivate, they are structured, responsible, they can be responsible for producing and cultivating offspring. Mm-hmm. Produce and cultivate offspring. And not just offspring from their bodies. That's just the, the part, the first part, mm-hmm. the initial part. Offspring from their bodies. But they're, what they're really responsible for is cultivating, producing and cultivating other members of the bride of Christ, yeah. even in their own household. That's their, the ultimate responsibility, is that they are cultivating and that they are producing other members of the bride of Christ, just like they are members of the bride of Christ. Yeah. That's the ultimate. So we need to understand that our family, and this is why it's so important, this is why God has, has put placed so, so much emphasis on the family and the structure. And that's why he laid it out the way that he did, because it is a representation, a natural, a natural and a, a uh, earthly a representation of him and the church. Yeah. And that's why he places such a great emphasis on that. And when we don't function, when we don't, when the family are not functioning the way that God has intended, and, I, and I'm not, you know, worldly family period, he, he designed that way. Mm-hmm. But when the but when believers, when the families of believers look like the families of the world, mm-hmm. then the, the, the people <laughs> cannot see. Then the world cannot see mm-hmm. what the church should be. Amen. And how the church should function. Amen. And that's, that's a dangerous thing that we as believers, I said, again, I'm not talking about unbelievers. I'm talking about us. I'm talking mm-hmm. about here in the church. Mm-hmm. It is dangerous for us. It is a bad witness for us. It's yes, a, it a horrible witness when our lives and our families and our lives do not align with the word and the structure of God. Amen. And, and, and it's, it's so sad. It's so sad, but but it, it, it's, you know, it's, some things have become what the world considers a norm when God never intended those things to be a norm, especially for the church. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But because we're so surrounded, we're always surrounded by these things, and, and we don't, we take on, we tend to take on the thought processes, the appetite. We're talking about that on Wednesday, the thought processes, the appetite. We tend to take, and, the, and the, 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 the lack of discipline. We take, we take those things on of the world and then the church and the what it should be is not functioning properly the way that God has intended for it to function. Amen. So that's why that's why it's important that we grasp it and we, we live accordingly. Then uh, as we started, uh, well, I didn't want it to start it. So here comes the, the new information. So we uh, want to talk about the family unit and understanding, again, that we're talking about the family unit. We're talking about, in particular, we're relating this to, well, not really, but we're flowing from the, the, the role of the, the, the daughter, the wife, the mother. We're flowing from that into what we call the family unit. So our family ought to be successful. If they are to be successful, then we must do things God's way. Understand that. Even in talking about the roles, and they talked about the roles of the male. We, we talked about all that and started aligning those things. So understanding that for our families to be successful, we must do things God's way. Amen. That's the only way that is known to us. Success, again, we're talking about the success in the kingdom. Mm-hmm. We're not talking about the success in the world and how that works. Mm-hmm. We're not talking about that because we know that that's temporal. But the, we're talking about the success of our families according to the word of God. And understand this, we always say this, 
And when we teach the word, we are teaching. And so even, even this, what I'm talking about, what I have been talking about, about men raising boys, I told you, sometimes we don't have a husband, we don't have a, a father in the household, but they still have to be raised. They still have to be raised. They still have to become uh, from daughters to, to uh, women to wives and mothers. It's still, it's still the same process. And so today what we're talking about, again, understand that this is from this is from a lack of a lack of us doing things God's way. Yes, it is. And despite whatever the situation, but despite whatever the situation, whatever you have found yourself in, whatever you have in your past, you know, the things that you've done, understand that what we're talking about now is because those things didn't come up. We are not, we are not without hope. Amen. We're never without hope. As long Lord. as you're living, you're never without hope. Lord. Now it's about getting new information, applying this new information, and maybe it's not even new. You probably knew it before, and I probably, in most cases, you did. But it's about now changing the tree mm -hmm. so that the fruit can be good. <coughs> now it's about cultivating the tree. It's about pulling up those weeds and pulling up those things. And, and nurturing it and plucking things out that wasn't supposed to be there, the things that was taking its nutrients. Now, what it's, now that's what it's about. It's about cultivating that tree so now that we can produce good fruit. Amen. Amen. That's what this is about. Lord. So understand that going forward. So this is not about condemnation. There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are walking up right now. You should be, you should be feeling some condemnation if you're still living this way. Yes. You should be. There's some condemnation, there's some, there's some, um, um, what's the other P word? Conviction. conviction, there we go. Some conviction, there should be some of that going on. <laughs> if you're not. But there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are what? In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Lord. That is the key. Oh, in man. Christ Lord. Jesus. Yes. So we got to find ourselves in him. Amen. And when we are in him, he is our covering. And that's why there is no condemnation, because he is our covering. And he is the one who has cleaned us up. Amen. Yes. He is the bride. He's washed Thank us. You, Lord. We are the bride of Christ. Hallelujah. He has washed us yes. in his word yes. when we are in him. Yes. And therefore, there is now no condemnation yes. to them who are in Christ Jesus. So, the complication. So, as I say, I say this before. Uh, I say that life is more complicated. It's more than one of the last statements that I made. Is <coughs> life is more complicated when daughters and sons become parents before they become women mm -hmm. and men, yeah. before they become wives and husbands. Mm -hmm. Life is more complicated. It's the reason why God set it up in that structure, in that order. And if we stick to his structure and his order, we would have less complications. Yes, we will. Life is already complicated. Yes. Meaning it's going to bring struggles. Mm -hmm. It's going to bring strife. It's going, mm -hmm. it's going to bring trials. It's going to bring, but we complicate things much more when we do things outside of God's order. Amen. It's not impossible to get through those things. People have gotten through those things. But there are struggles that come along with it that could have been avoided That's right. had we done things God's way. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, here we're going to help those. We talk again, we're still talking about the family unit. So, we're going to help those who may not have done. They got off track and we did not do things God's way. But God is giving us a life jacket. And he's throwing us a preserve in Him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, some families are made up of what has been labeled. Uh, with stepchildren, mm. stepchildren, uh, stepchild, stepchildren. As the dictionary defines as a child of one's husband or wife, the dictionary, the stepfather, step, the dictionary defines this, mm -hmm. a stepchild or stepchildren as a child or children of one's husband or wife by a previous marriage. That's mm -hmm. what the dictionary defines it as. It's a Step, step child or step children. A child of one's husband or wife by a previous marriage. And then the world has this label of a blended family. A blended family or, or 
Yeah, a blended family. So a blended family is a family de defined, it's defined as a family in which one or both members of the couple have children from previous relationships. That's a blended family. One or both of the couple, uh, I mean, of the members of that couple, they have both have or one has uh, children outside of that particular covenant, outside of that, from previous existing children who live with him. So that's traditional. It's traditional. A married couple who has children outside from previous relationships, and they're bringing these children into this, uh, this particular household. Some apply the term to uh, non-custodial relationships. Some apply to non-custodial relationships, where the step-parent refers to the partner of the parent with whom the child doesn't live. So some apply the term to non-custodial relationships. So even if, um, so if, if I was divorced and now I'm remarried and I have children in this marriage, so I would consider the father, this is the way the world thinks, I would consider the father as the stepfather. Those are his stepchildren. But then we might have on this side where my ex-husband, he may or may not be married, may or may not be married, but then those children are still considered her, he's with someone, considered her stepchild or stepchildren. So they apply to non-custodial. So whether you're in the house or out of the house, the children, it doesn't even matter which side or where, they, where they're living, the, those terms blended family are also used in that regard. And then we have some cases, where, rare cases, these are rare cases, where a step parent is used to describe the relationship with, with an adult child, an adult child who never lived in the house, right? So we have, uh, we have a, a divorced family and uh, let's say the mother, she has children, she has grown children. And then she gets remarried. So those grown children never live in the house, but they still consider that a blended family. Mm -hmm. Okay, so again, we're all talking about what the world determines on, what, and what the world considers and, and, and labels those types of families, those types of things. So the terms cannot be found. First, let's, 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 let's remember this, that stepchild, stepchildren, stepfather, stepmother, blended family, you're never going to see that in the scriptures. It's nowhere in the scriptures. Nowhere. As a matter of fact, let's look at <clears throat> let's look at Samuel chapter 13. I want you to go to Samuel chapter 13. And this is a very familiar a very familiar passage of scripture. Second Samuel chapter 13, and let's look at, let's start reading with verse 1. And it came to pass after this that Absalom, the son of David, I want you to pay attention carefully to the way this is worded. It came to pass, and it came to pass after this that Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister. So Absalom is the son of David, and he had a sister whose name was Tamar. Mm -hmm. And Amnon, the son of David, Amnon, the son of David, loved her. Okay? So here, this indicates that they have different mothers. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they could have just said that Absalom and Amnon, the sons of David, had a fair sister. Okay. So this is indicating, this is showing, there is a difference. A distinction is being made. For clarity, a distinction is being made, but here we don't see anywhere where it says step. We don't see anywhere where it says it's a blended thing. We don't see that anywhere. This is telling us that David had two sons, Amnon and Absalom. Here in particular. And Amnon was so vexed that he felt sick for his sister. He felt vexed for, it didn't say stepsister. It just, 
said sister. Mm -hmm. And then go down to verse 12, verse 11. And when she had brought them, she had, so she, he wanted her, remember, he wanted her to fix something to eat, the leather, you know, come in, and, and I could eat in her hand. So she fixed this food. And when she had brought them unto him to eat, he took hold of her and said unto her, Come lie with me, what? My sister. And she answered him, Nay, my brother. <laughs> so step was never mentioned here. Step was never mentioned here. But again, by the scripture in verse 1, we can see that they were not, that they were what, what the world considered half. So had we share half of a parent, or we share a parent, which makes it have to be up, because we don't share the other parent, that makes us half. We're half brothers and sisters. But again, nowhere in here in the scripture does it ever indicate a half, a step, or anything of that nature. It does not indicate. Let's think about, even let's think about Jesus. Let's think about Jesus and say, when he was born, when he was born, he was brought into this world. He was brought into the world with a mother and not a natural father. Amen. Yes. Jesus was born with a mother, but not a natural father. But nowhere in scripture does they ever call Joseph his stepfather. Right. Okay. It was his father. Although he was, he was not his natural father, he was still in the household, and he was Joseph's son. And they operated like Jesus was Joseph's son. Now listen, don't ever think that he was a child. He was a child. Don't ever think that Jesus didn't have to be corrected about something in the household, that he had to be instructed about something in the household. Remember, he was a natural, he was a natural being. He was a, he was a human. Amen. So don't think that in his household that he walked as Jesus. He didn't. When he was living with his mother, and his, he didn't walk as Jesus as we know with Jesus. He was Jesus the son. Amen. Jesus the baby. Jesus the toddler. Jesus the infant. <laughs> Jesus the adolescent. He was all of those things, without sin, but don't ever think that he was without instruction. They gave him some instruction. Mm -hmm. If it's no more than get up and make up your bed. Mm -hmm. If it's no more than be sure you brush your teeth before mm -hmm. you go to bed. Whatever it was, he had some instruction. Mm -hmm. He had some reading. And Joseph and Mary, Joseph, not being his natural father, was right there to do it. Amen. He was right there to do it. So we have to see that even if, if Jesus, if Jesus, if Jesus has laid the way, his life has laid the way, has paved the way, Joseph had all the parental rights, all the parental rights, although he was not the biological father. He had all parental rights. So we don't see in a lot of cases, the non-biological spouse has no parental rights. When you consider blended families, stepchildren, stepfather, they do not have the biological, non-biological spouse has no parental rights in some case in some of those households. It should not be when it comes to people of the house of God. That should never be a consideration. Why? If, if you are having problems, if you are having trouble with your, the non-biological uh, parent or person, your, your, your non-biological spouse having parental rights, then I have to question your judgment on you marrying them. Mm -hmm. right. See, your, then your, ju your judgment is not questionable. What is it about this parent, this, this, your spouse, that you don't want? Why is it that you don't want them to have parental rights? Why is it in the household where when it comes to when it comes to my children, well, I will discipline them. I will discipline them. Now you can provide a roof over our heads, you can feed them, you can clothe them. You can do all of that. But when it comes to discipline, I will do that. 
They're good enough to provide food. Mm -hmm. They're good mm -hmm. enough to provide yeah. shelter and clothing. Mm -hmm. But you don't want them disciplining mm -hmm. your children. Mm -hmm. it's a, that, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. Amen. There's a problem with that. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. So we need to understand that God never intended, just like we see in, in, in the, the case of Jesus, just like we see here in the case of, 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 of Absalom and, and Amnon, God never intended for there to be a divide. If there, if you are going to bring children together, you, you, uh, uh, they're married before you have children by other people, you're going to bring, you're going to, what the worker said is blend, you're going to bring them together. It's all one thing. It's a family. It's a family unit. And that's just the bottom line. Amen. So then you go back. Now you now we have to go back to what we've been teaching about and what we will continue to teach about on this purpose of the family. The purpose of the family doesn't change because you have non-biological children in your household. Your role doesn't change because you have non-biological children in your household. Those roles are still the same. It is important to witness the results of the profession <coughs> of faith. The profession of faith, you need to witness the results of the profession of faith in the spouse that you're choosing, in the one that you're choosing to be your spouse. Particularly, particularly when you have children involved. Yes. That's one thing when it's just your own life. And you still need to. But when you have children involved, it is more important, even more so, that you witness that you witness the results of the profession of their faith before you <coughs> decide to tie yourself to them. That's very important. You never, ever, ever want to choose out of your flesh and based on your flesh because your flesh will your flesh will fail you every time. Amen. Amen. Your flesh will fail you every time. So you cannot make decisions and make choices out of, oh, he looks good. He's mm -hmm. eye candy. Eye candy. <laughs> candy melt. Yeah. <laughs> it melts. Mm -hmm. It's no good. After a while, it gets sticky in that paper. Amen. When it gets old, then you start to see, oh, that wasn't candy at all. That's a mess. <laughs> so we cannot choose. We cannot choose based on those natural things. We cannot choose based on that. You need to be. But we talk. We talk and that's, that's, this is how we end up not trusting them with our children. Because what we wanted, we didn't look for everything we needed to look for in this spouse that we were going to bring our children in contact with and have and have uh, in in the lives of our children. We didn't think about all of that. We only thought about a certain part, the part that affected us, the part that, that we wanted to see. Mm -hmm. But no, if you're going to raise children together, you're going to have to think about all of that. Because mm -hmm. I need to be able to trust mm -hmm. that the word in you is going, and, and the, 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 the spirit of God in you is going to lead you and guide you to lead our home. And then I can trust you with my children. Mm -hmm. That he's going to, I want you. You, need, you. you should desire someone to come to, that you bond with. You should desire that they treat your children as if they were their own mm -hmm. life. Yeah. That's what you should desire. You should desire that. And that means everything that comes along with it. Everything that comes along with it. The instruction, the correction, all of that. Everything that comes along with it. You should desire that your spouse, future spouse, that they be tied and connected and understand what their roles are. Mm. We need to understand, you need to understand, so not only do you need to see the witness of the profession of their faith, but you also need to understand or, or, or know that they understand their role as a husband or wife. Mm. You, need to understand, you need to know and be confident that they understand their role as a father, as a mother. Those things you, have, you need to talk about. You need to understand. You, you, if they have their own children, you can observe that. You can observe that. But then you need to talk about it. It is important that you talk about those things. How are we going to? What are we going to do? So when we get married, we
we got we both have children. How are we going to function? Bottom line is we're going to function the same way that God has stated that we function. You are the father of this household. I am the mother of this household. And that's what we're going to do. Everybody else, we're still responsible. Remember what we're talking about. We're still responsible for raising godly seed. We're still responsible for, for producing and cultivating other members of the bride of Christ. Yeah. That's our responsibility. That is our responsibility. None biological parent or not. That is our responsibility. Turn to 1 Timothy chapter 5.
And you're going to have to do that nurturing biblically with the scriptures. You're going to have to do that. But then you're going to also have to take some time. You're going to have to take some time. You're going to have to take some time. That means what? That means that non biological parent and the, and, the, and the biological parent, we're going to spend some time, especially if you have more than one child. We're going to spend some time with each one of them collectively. Mm -hmm. With just the two of us, two parents, and this child, we're going to spend some time with them. And then, and then the non biological parent, they need to spend some time alone mm -hmm. with each child. Yeah. Why? Because we need to, we need to develop. We need to develop this bond. We need to develop this. We need to develop this, this relationship. We need to cultivate this relationship. And you gotta be frank. You gotta be listen. Nobody's trying to replace, and, and that needs to be the thing. Especially if the parent, if the parent is the other parent, the biological parent outside of the house. Especially if they're still involved. Understand? I'm not trying to take. I cannot replace your father. I cannot replace your mother. But as long as we are in the house together, I am considered your father. I am considered. Because in my household, this is the way that things are going. Amen. This is my role, and this is your role. Mm. These are my responsibilities, and this is what I have to do, and these, these are your responsibilities. But again, but the both of the parents, both of the parents will have to relay that same message. Mm -hmm. That's important. That's important. Amen. That they both parents relate the same message. You cannot, you cannot have a divided, a divided house when it comes to that. Amen. You can't have the non-biological parent saying it, but the parent, the biological parent, is not saying it. <laughs> I would even say that the non-biological parent needs to say it first. She needs to address it first. So that there's some clear understanding about how this is going to work. We're doing things God's way. We're making the tree good. Amen. So that the fruit can be good. We're cultivating. We're going to pull some things up. Yes, I, I understand that it was not, it was not, it was nobody's desire for your father and I or your mother and I to get a divorce. But this, it, it happens, it, it is what it is, but this is where we are now. That's right. This is where we are now. And going forward, this is what we're going to do. Amen. Mm -hmm. See, there's nothing wrong with your children. As a matter of fact, it's good that your children know. It's good that your children know that you are human. They need to know that. You know, we try to be these super, these, these super parents. We ain't never done nothing. That we're saved. We're sanctified. We ain't never done nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. When that's just not the case. Amen. And then, and then your children will tend to children will tend to come to you uh, uh, more when they are having troubles and having difficulties. If they if they when they know that when you have been open to and, and showing them yes I was this way but this is what happened and these were the consequences of what happened. This is how I suffered from it. Then this is how God has changed me. And this is how now life is better. They need to see that. Amen. Because then they will, tend, they will tend to come in. I'm not saying they're going to come to you for everything. We know we're not Christ. We know they're not going to come to you for everything. But I'm saying that they will be more susceptible to coming to you if they understand that, yes, I, I know that she's failed. She, 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 has, she shared that with me. And she also shared with me how she came out. Yeah. And really, when they come into you and they're in trouble, it's because they want you to help them out. Yeah. Help me. That's, that's what they say. Help me. <laughs> they say, even if they're not saying, they say, help me. I don't know what I'm doing. Help me. So that's why it's very important that we not that we not uh, um, we not withhold. And I'm not again. Again, I must say you tell them every. Something they don't need to know. Amen. Something they don't need to know. But to an extent, you need to share with them so they can see how you were and how you're not. Amen. And how God helped you in those situations when you were. Mm -hmm. How he helped you out. So that they can understand. 
If they, if they got, if got that, and see, that's how you help cultivate this God in them. If God did it for them, he can do it for me. Mm-hmm. And they're going to want to see that. If God did it for them, I, I need to see that he can do it for me. And that, that is what, that's what we need to do. So, again, sitting down and telling them, so yes, this, this did not happen the way God intended it the first time. This is what we're doing now. And we're moving forward, making the tree good so that the, that the fruit can be good. This is how we're going to go forward. And understanding that these are the rules. This is the standard of God for a family. And this is what we're going to do. Amen. It has to be taught. It has to be shown and it has to be taught. Let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 3. Another familiar passage of scripture. Um, Verse 7. Moreover, he must be, so we're talking about the bishop, the bishop in the church. He must have a good report of him, which are without, lest, lest he fall into reproach and the same snare the devil. Likewise, must the deacons be great, not double-minded, not given to much wine, not greedy of filthy lucre, holding a mystery of the faith in pure consciousness. And let these also first be proved. Them, let them use uh, then let them use the office of a deacon being found blameless. Blameless. Uh, verse 12. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children and their households well. Let them be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children and their households well. Ruling their children. Again, nothing here say anything about a step child. doesn't say anything about being a step parent. It says, let them rule their children and their own houses well. Mm -hmm. And yes, these are criteria for deacons and bishops. But I dare say, if you are a godly man, you are professing the Lord as your Lord and Savior. This is for any believing household. Amen. It's for any believing household. You must have your children... Rule your house as well, having your children under subjection, regardless if they are your biological children or not. This standard applies to any man professing Christ as their Savior. Why? Because we are talking about aligning our lives, aligning our household the way God intended, after the structure of Christ and the church. That's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Simple. Yes, I know it's simple, Mm -hmm. but we don't think of, always think about it that way. We don't always think about it that way. When we get married, we start to have children. We don't think about, we don't think about, I'm trying to align my life and structure my life according to yeah. Ephesians chapter 6. Amen. Mm-hmm. That's, that's not our first thought. As a matter of fact, most of us in here, we weren't even taught those things before we were married. Amen. Yeah. Now, definitely, you've been in this local ministry, and you've gotten married in this local ministry. You don't have an excuse. <laughs> but that's still, you don't have an excuse, but that still wasn't your first thought. Amen. Although you don't have an excuse, that still was not your first thought when you got married. But it, need, it needs to be a conscious thing. It needs to be conscious. We don't just, it's not, it's not cute. It's not just cute to get married and have two and a half children. I got two and one on the left. <laughs> it's not cute. It's work. Yeah, that's right. It's not cute. It's a responsibility. That's right. It's not cute. There are roles involved. There's structure involved. And God is intending, he is intending, for you to do just as if you in chapter 6 says. He's intending for you to do what 1 Timothy 5 and 8 says. <laughs> providing for your own house. He, he, he intends for that to happen. Look at Titus. Speaking to the aged women in 
including the mothers, understand that everything in that, in that particular thing mm -hmm. is talking about wives teaching other women. Mm -hmm. But remember that the women are first in your household. Mm -hmm. The women are first in your household, regardless of that it's biological or non-biological. Women in your household are women in your household, men in your household are men in your household, daughters and, and sons, and they should be treated under the same rules, under the same regulations. You should be guiding them, you should be leading them, regardless of anything else. Amen? Amen. 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 Amen.